Hello, basketball fans, and welcome to a special podcast from MVP Sports. Ricky Whitmer here along with Dave Oster. Hey, guys. And we're going to be talking some basketball here on this bonus podcast. And the reason why? Carmelo Anthony Dave has opted out of his contract. He's coming to the Bulls. Pretty big news, guys, <laughs> in case you're there's, curious. There's no, he's not officially coming to the Bulls. But he officially I'm just opted out. He officially opted out, which means he could be coming to the Bulls. And just so happened to be visiting Chicago during the time yeah, he period. he was visiting, we're recording this today, is Sunday. He was visiting today to, and I quote, check out the lifestyle, like the living situation here in Chicago. I'd say it's pretty nice. I mean, Scotty Pods had a nice dig here in uh, yeah, he's South in Sub. suburbs. So I mean, South South I expect Melo to be more of a city guy myself. Could you could you imagine how fans would? I think people would barrage his house just to try to see him more than Scotty Pods if he lived in the well, suburbs. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, as much as I love, I didn't Pesetnik. even know Scotty Pods was living in the suburbs yeah. until you told me. No, I love I love Pesetnik, Don't get me wrong, but I think Carmelo is just a little step above him as far as popularity goes. Be, it would be awesome, though. I mean, got my fan cap on right now for oh, it, I obviously. Mean, well, the Knicks? Yep. No more Mello. So, yeah. I mean, Mello does have other suitors. Rajon Rondo has said that Mello is the missing piece in Boston, but... Let's be honest. Uh, maybe it's my homerism for Chicago. He's leaning towards the Bulls. He's yeah. got to be leaning towards the Bulls. Only the Bulls. Only the Bulls. Ooh, that's where we there keep you that go. up for you. But, I mean... This is or, to me. This is what, still an outside shot. As much I hate to say it, the heat, the heatles, the heatles. No, see, I don't, I don't see it. He'd be the fourth member. I don't see it only because he's not going to take that that dumb that lowered money. Mm. Plus, and this is the thing that surprised me. There have been reports that Coach Thibodeau is actively trying to recruit Mello, and I know that you don't totally agree with this, but. Why would Thibodeau be recruiting a guy who doesn't play defense? Because That's he Thibodeau's knows. Motto. Yeah, I know it's his motto, but because he knows it's what they need to take them to the final step. It's what it takes to get to the championship is some offense. You can only lose so many games scoring 70 points. It's embarrassing, okay? It's embarrassing not well, having a not, scoring threat on the not, court. Not just that. Look at what Thibodeau has been able to do two years in a row without now Derek Rose. without Derrick Rose. He can yeah. make a bunch of chumps. Look like the fourth role, best team in the We East. prefer to call them role players here in <laughs> Chicago. He could make Nate Robinson relevant. He could get Nate Robinson a contract. When he goes to Denver. Yeah, he gave Nate Robinson a contract. I'm he pretty gave, sure it was him a couple he's, thank he's yous. He's pretty much going to give Augustin. DJ Augustine? DJ Augustine. Augustine. Jeez. He's going to get a going contract Going Roman? Now. I just... I'm not Augustus. Gonna, you don't need to know his name because he's not going to do DJ anything. DJ Augustine. After, after yeah. he leaves Chicago, it's going to be the same as Nate Robinson. Possibly, most likely. But yes, I think it's a perfect fit for us because of Thibodeau, because the way that we play defense. We play zone, okay? Zone means that Melo doesn't have to go one-on-one with anybody. Yeah, I mean, look at, at, any look time. at what Syracuse... Oh, 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 where Melo came from. What? Look what Syracuse has done with the zone. Yeah, it covers up some defensive deficiencies by using all the other guys you got out there to help you just cover up because Melo maybe won't be 100% on defense. You know what? That's okay. Because nobody like, can go in expecting Melo to be uh, a defender. That's just not who he is. He's a scorer. It's exactly what we need. I'm not even counting on Derrick Rose to be 100% healthy this year. I don't know what he's going to give us, but I can tell you with Carmelo Anthony on this team, we get 22 to 28 points a night from him. He's like a 37% uh, three-point shooter in the last couple of years in mm-hmm. New York. He's really stepped up that part of his game, which is fantastic because as a Bulls fan, we love the three ball. We rode Cal Corver's three ball. We it's just, it's necessary. Come on, a little more hot sauce, Cal. Yeah, I miss him. a little him. bit more. I miss him. But he gives exactly what we need. I don't, I don't miss need. that defense that let me cower in fear. I'd rather have the Kurt Heinrich bear hug. Heinrich's, it's <laughs> Captain Kirk, though. But here's the Bulls. The thing that the Bulls need to do in order to get mellow is free up some cap space. Because Small step. Right now, here are the kind of, according to hoopshype.com, our highest salaries, Derrick Rose, Carlos Boozer, ridiculously bad con- contract, Joakim Noah, Taj Gibson. Yeah. And Taj is the smallest at eight mil. Yeah, and Taj Gibson could be on the move. Could be. But I, obviously step one is to amnesty Claus Boozer. I mean, just get him off the books. Get him out of here. We don't want anything to do with him anymore. 
Thanks for the years. Um, but honestly, he was nothing but a consolation prize for not getting LeBron, LeBron plus. Or... Yeah, LeBron plus. I'll just leave yeah. it at that. I mean, I just – and I look at the Bulls' other moves. It was, I want to say, a week or two ago. The Bulls came out and said, everybody but Derrick Rose is on the table yep. for a trade. And I saw that and I go, you're going to trade away Joe Keem? The, the defensive player of the year, Joe Keem Noah? You're going to trade away Joe Keem. And I know that you could be sitting there going, well, Ricky, big men don't big men don't win anything. Look at Dwight Howard. But Joe Keem not even Noah like, is good. He's some weird combination. He's not it, quite all big and men, it's weird but because he can run the floor. If you, were, if you were to take this conversation and sit us in a room three years ago, Oh, I hate Joe Keem. No, he's not good for the team. I, I hate wrong. his goofy ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> or the p- pistol? You gonna fire Pop, the pistol? Popping names? pistols. pistols. I mean, how is how he runs down the court? Yeah, but <laughs> he gives it all, and you can't ask for anything more out of a player than that. Well, so, one guy that the Bulls are looking to trade for still is Orlando's Aaron Afalo. Afalo. That's one guy that, and names that have been thrown out. We're we're reported to have been maybe giving up Taj for him, giving up Merodic. See, and Merodic's one of those gigantic question marks. This guy has been talked up so much. Apparently, we had contacts with him, like maybe getting him to come over this season, which would be fantastic because he's been dominating. I put, I don't really know, but every report says dominating. The numbers that we get mm-hmm. from them. Mm-hmm. He's a very good player. And hey, look at why what, can't we hey, pull him over here? Hey, look at what uh, the Spurs were able to do with Euro players. Oh, championship! Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, Euro player. I mean, uh, so far we've had so, some success stories so from top players wait, in Europe. Wait, wait. Ricky if, Rubio. If LeBron stays with Miami, the then the Mavericks and Spurs have shown that LeBron's weakness is Euro players. Right. Bellinelli <laughs> also was an addition to that Spurs yeah. team. Help take it over. So, so you just have a bunch of Euro players and boom. Right. There right. you go. I, I would really be excited because we've been staying back, hearing about Merodic, and haven't gotten to see him play stateside forever. Just come on over. I don't see what the big holdup is. Just come on. Come on. We bring him in. If we get Mello, Noah, whatever Derek Rose brings back to the table, fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then we just fill it out with more role players, and we're good. Honestly, I think that right there would be a championship team. Well, and I mean – the one thing I would think of, especially with the Aaron Afalo trade, is yep. let's say we do that. Does that take us out of the running then for Mello? It might. It might not. You know, I don't. I don't know the current contract state of Afalo because this is it. League source continues to indicate that despite Boozer having sixteen point eight, this is according to Bleach Report, the Bulls might have to sign Anthony, um, and then using the amnesty on Boozer. And then they'd have to trade Taj for a follow. Okay. We'd have to give up Taj. Okay. I think that's that's an okay trade off because. And you want to know why I'm okay with that? Yeah. I'm going to show you that picture I'm looking at, Dave. Do you, do you see those two people? Tell they, the listeners who we're looking at and what jerseys they're wearing. They, these two players that we may have mentioned, Carmelo and Aaron, played together. They had a little bit of a history in uh, Denver. In those powder blues. I do love those jerseys. Yeah. So. Two guys that know each other. Let's be honest, very though, well. that Denver team just didn't get shit done. Yeah, that, that's uh, uh, they could do shit here in Chicago though with a Derrick Rose. I, no, it's Thibodeau and Noah Rose I, again. Derrick Rose doesn't need to be Derrick Rose. Two years off doesn't. Need what do you to, expect him to do? Doesn't need to be Derrick Rose if we get Mello. What reasonable expectation do you have for Derrick Rose this year? I would say the thing I would want Rose to do is kind of. Alter his game more towards a CP3. Yeah. You have the yeah, shot. That's a dream world. You have a shot, but you're more of an assist guy. Yeah. I absolutely would love if he could take that backseat role and not, not be the guy. A who... Rajon Rondo type without as much driving. Yeah. Ron- Rondo is still uh, still a force. Like, he takes it to the lane hard. To me, Derek Rose. Derek Rose always does that. And that's why I'm like, dude, well, two years, you Derek, gotta, you gotta Derek take it back. Rose, you can still drive to the lane S- sometimes. Scale it down a little. You don't have to do as much, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. He, he doesn't have the whole city on his shoulders. If we got Carmelo Anthony mm-hmm. in here, I think Noah really has stepped it up this year. Um, so, I, honestly, if Rose gives us like 15 and uh, I don't know, like seven assists. Fifteen and seven, I'd be happy. Let's put realistically, if Melo signs with the Bulls, yeah, we don't have. Let's say we don't have Boozer. We Yay! Take Boozer out, put Melo in. Yeah, just with that move, where are you putting the Bulls next season? Uh, 
I'm giving us probably 50, LeBron, LeBron stays with the Heat in this situation. Probably 50 wins and uh, second in the East, then. Yeah, yeah, deep. second in the East. I, th- I think we could go game for game with uh, the Heat at that point, honestly, because yeah, no, I, I would absolutely be adamant that we can go game for game right, with the Heat right now. Here would be our team, barring because we obviously need to sign some free agents. Here's the guy we have under contract. We'll take him Boozer out, put Mello in for him. So we have Mello, Rose, Noah, Gibson, Dunleavy, Snell, Butler. Yeah. We got to get some free agents in there, but that's a pretty a couple. good but, pretty good team. Oh, I mean, maybe maybe Rota comes over and we're, then a draft pick. Because we're losing a the— top draft pick. Technically, we had $6 million from Bynum still on the board. <laughs> And then Kurt Heinrich. Forgot about Kurt that. Heinrich's season is done. He could test free agency. Naz Muhammad is off the books right now. Hamilton, August, uh, yeah, Augustine. Augustine, and Mike James. I keep wanting to call him Augustine. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I'd say that uh, we should, if we can get Melo, and then, like we were talking, maybe those two draft picks, we bump them up plus something. Something to sweeten the deal. Go for mm-hmm. a top pick. Uh, if not, go for Alliance Stevenson. Maybe. I mean, he's a free agent. I think that that would give us the sixth man we want. Luol Deng's a free agent. We can bring Luol no. back to Chicago. We do not bring Luol <laughs> back. We did it once, and that was with Kirk Heinrich, and mm-hmm. that was it. What do you think about this? Bulls are also talking about trading both of their first-round draft picks to move up in the draft. Two-for-one deal? I think it's a smart move. Uh, if the NBA has taught us anything, it's that maybe, maybe in go, that, maybe in that, Afalo, don't go at all. that in that a follow trade. Hey, we'll give you maybe Curtin two fur or Taj and two first. You give us a follow and your first. If we, it's a top if five we pick. can move up to a five, it's a top five. Pick. It's pretty good. I mean, it doesn't get us, you know, Jabari. But... Well, it doesn't, but it could get us like a guy who doesn't necessarily have to play right away in Embiid. Well, obviously, they won't or, play right away or, because of Tom Thibodeau. Or Noah Vonley. Tom Thibodeau. Tom Thibodeau. Well, I mean, Snell did play a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I and, mean, and let's see, did he live Eric up to Mur- his hype? Eric, Mur- Eric Murphy also got waived. Yeah, did they live up to their hype now? No, not at all. But, I mean, with the Bulls, obviously, Melo I think if they got huge... and got a game changer, um, not only in free agency is with it, Carmel Anthony, there... but in the draft. I'm going to oh, throw this question up. at you. Throwing this one at you. Is okay. there a possibility that the Bulls can get Mellow and Love See, while keeping Rose and Noah? No. no. You have to give up Noah for I Love? I think you'd have to give up Noah for Love. Just cash-wise, I don't I think I feel it's like possible. we're playing NBA 2K right now. I really want to. <laughs> that, that would, it's, like, it's like fantasy world right now. Let's just throw all these contracts together. You give me some draft yep. picks. I'll give you this. But the other news in some more opt-out getting away from our Chicago Bulls is Tim Duncan. He's got to make a decision by Tuesday. LeBron and the big three got to make a decision by June 30th. Can't wait. We'll start with Duncan. Does he come back? Danny Green at their championship parade took the mic and basically said what every cocky player says is, y'all want to do this next year, right? This is pretty good, right? You want to do this next year, right? I think Duncan comes Putting back. Duncan on the spot. You think he comes back? I think he does. I don't know if it's the smartest move for him. But I think he comes back. This is a team that can reload just as fast. The core is there. I think they got one more in them. One more. Always one more. If Duncan comes back, does Patty Mills resign with the Spurs? I don't know. Do they need Patty Mills? Not essentially. I mean, I'm sure they could go out and get another role player who does similar or get something done for them. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it, if you're Patty Mills, I'd say it's hard not to cash in. To try to go for that payday after winning a championship. Back-to-back championships, though. Hot payday. I'm sorry, most NBA players, if you're under the age of 30, you're thinking payday over championship. Because right now, Tim Duncan has his player option. It would be for just over $10 million. And then, besides that, off the Boris DL, Matt Bonner, Patty Mills, Shannon Brown, uh, James Je- or Jeffers, and then they have a team and a player option on Austin Day and Aaron Baines. Yeah, lots of guys just Who, up in whatever. the air. Like, and They're I mean, up in there. But honestly, they've got the, court the only stuff. ones that were names in the finals, Patty Mills, who was only making just over a million dollars, Yep. Matt Bonner and Boris Diaw. Yeah. I Does think... Boris Diaw get a payout for his play in uh, the finals? A little bit more than his 4.7 mil. I think he'll probably stay about the same contract, to be honest with you. Um, I think they in could... San Antonio? Yeah. 
I think they could go out and get all those, get the three main guys you mentioned mm-hmm. right there back, and then fill out with some more guys, uh, try to round out that roster one could more you, time. Could you imagine? Because Parker, it would be Parker, Duncan, and Ginobili's contract year. In their contract year, just back-to-back titles. Yeah. For the six. That'd, that'd be amazing. Duncan gets six. Gets what it a before, story. Gets it before Kobe. Kobe's Ooh. upset. The Black Mamba's crying like a little baby. But what, what, what if the Black <laughs> Mamba comes back from this torn... A, from from the torn Achilles. Achilles. And you want to say ACL because that's it's what always the ACL. Happen, but the torn Achilles comes back from that, and what if he goes hard and just carries an entire Lakers organization <laughs> kicking and screaming into the playoffs? <laughs> Never gonna happen though. Okay, Never. now for the big the big options is LeBron, D Wade, and Chris Bosh. They have a bit of a decision to make. Some of the decision relies on where Carmelo lands right now. A bit of a decision, but this is the thing that's going on. LeBron, as we know. Chris Bosh wants to stay in Miami. LeBron is going on a family vacation in order to clear his mind. Smart move. Talk with family. And we also know that Pat Riley has basically, in my mind, called out LeBron and said, don't quit on us. See this through to the end, basically, in his comments. And you have guys predicting that LeBron, if he doesn't stay in Miami, could go to the Rockets, could go to the Clippers. How do you see this playing out, Dave? Well, you know, my only argument against going to those two teams, what conference are they in? Sorry, The Western the West. Conference. That, that presents a little bit of a problem when it comes to uh, LeBron James, does it not? He goes I'm, through, si- I'm sitting here as a Bulls fan going, go. It's a go. bit more difficult Get to out win of in the, the West. East. Yeah, it's a bit more difficult to win in the Western There's also, Conference. And I mean, this is, of course, it's ESPN, but they're also going like, well, could he play with Kobe? No. Could he play He's with Kobe? He's not going to play with Kobe. Could you imagine him on the other side of town in L.A.? That'd be awesome. <laughs> but, no, I, honestly, I think he's going to stay in the East because it is a easier road to the playoffs. And if anything, if he leaves town, it'll be for Cleveland. You think he'd go back to Cleveland? They, but, I know I've said before, either on the radio or in videos, that they would open him up. Like, open, open the doors. Only accept yep. him with open arms. That's yeah. what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, they would unburn those jerseys. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the thing you can do that yeah. with science. <laughs> yeah, but no, honestly, I think he's the, the whole conversation between him and Wade really mm-hmm. comes down to well, Wade, do you have it in you? Because well, here's that's the where thing it drops with Wade, down. and I think that I would agree with the people that say maybe Wade's a six man because of those knees. Yeah, well, I mean, you can't count on him. That that's over. I mean, we we were like, okay, we'll rest in the you six, know, majority six of the season. Six man of the year D Wade? No. But, you know what? He if he got plenty of rest this year and still only showed up for really one and a half games of this playoffs. So, uh, that series, I should say that final series. Yeah. One and a half games. Um I think they really need to go out and make something happen in free agency before mm-hmm. uh, LeBron's decision comes due. I think we were discussing maybe possibly have a Kyle Lowry. Uh, well, they down are there. looking at a Kyle Lowry to bring him in, give some point guard help to this Which, team where Mario Chalmers just went poof and he's gone. Yeah, uh, Stephen A's comments perfectly described it. Ricky, I think you have it down. Where he, where he was talking to Wilbon, he goes, you know what, I am not going to, I have held long enough. There is an APB out for Mario Chalmers game. We cannot find it, Wilbon. It's we perfect. cannot find it. It is way too perfect. Uh, <laughs> the part where, just how many, like, in the finals, how many APB references were just made either by Stephen A., by Bill Simmons, when it came to the Heat. Yeah. Norris Cole, Mario Chalmers, they were the first two. Yep. No, and then you've got the age LeBron James sitting on the bench, and by that, I mean their big fan. <laughs> they got Odin back there who looks yeah. like LeBron in 20 years. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's legit I mean, scary. The two teams, let's just focus on the Western Conference teams that they've mentioned. Okay, Houston so if he makes LA. the incorrect move yes. here and goes to and the goes West. goes to them. You this got is, Houston. This is who Houston okay. has on the bo- like okay. on the books. Yeah, Dwight, twenty one point four million. Yep, James Harden. All right, and Dwight Howard's locked up until the sixteen seventeen season. He is a player option, so two thousand sixteen off season he could opt out. Yep, Harden about fourteen mil. Um, Omir Ashik fourteen goes from five mil this year to fourteen mil next the year. The only reason the Bulls wouldn't re-sign him was because of that contract. Jeremy Lin goes from the same five point two two five to the same exact contract. Goes to that fourteen mil. Exactly another next reason. Year. Th- those gigant- those inflating contracts for Ashik and Lin. So the Rockets would have really to trade. The they would have to trade Jeremy Lin in order to get LeBron. 
Or Omer Sheik. Or, or a Sheik, but more teams would want Lynn than a Sheik. Well, or they Essek, mean... if you're listening to ESPN. Yeah. God, Omer I hate them. Um, No, I think Lynn still has some viability in the NBA. I think he's a solid player. I think he was underutilized uh, in Houston. So The Clippers, though, yeah. they would have to do a similar thing, but they would be able to get more. They have Chris Paul locked up at 20 mil next year. Blake Griffin, 17. DeAndre Jordan, 11. And then it drops off J.J. Redick at 6. They'd have to trade Blake Griffin in order to get LeBron, but fair trade-off, I think. You get Paul, LeBron, and DeAndre Jordan. You still have DeAndre Jordan. Dunk City. I mean, have we have we seen the Lob City? Has it done anything, really? Other than make you, uh, you top beat, 10 highlights on You ESPN. beat the Warriors, and then you lost. Well, the, uh, the Warriors weren't at 100%. And you also 100%. had the Donald Sterling fuel behind it. I guess. I mean, Stefan Curry said that night where the players were going to do the strike, where they were going to walk off yeah. the court, he even, like, it was either him or one of the other Warriors players that said, we weren't winning that game. Yeah. No, after, I mean, they they, just... after they made that decision, we, weren't, we were not winning that game with the emotion that was in that stadium. Yeah. It's, it's rough. I, I think that either way it would be a mistake. But chances of winning a championship would be much higher in Houston than if he went over. I Get mean, to play with Dwight. Dwight doesn't want to be the numero uno exactly. superstar. And they're both they're both like, oh, I want to be the good guy kind of thing going. And Harden, going back to his role as the third man, mm-hmm. uh, he's much more comfortable there. Here's where Cleveland. Cleveland sits at a very interesting spot mm-hmm. because their highest paid player is off the books. It was Luau Deng. Yep. They have team options with Verizhao, Alonzo, Gee, and Scotty Hobson. Verizhao's contract, the option is like $9.8 million. Then you have Kyrie, who's not going to be anywhere near over 10 until his contract is up following the 2016 right, season. But he's but already making qual- noise like he wants a, out. But that's a qualifying offer. That's not even yeah. like... And then you have Dion Waiters, who is on that rookie contract. Uh, Tristan Thompson, Anthony Bennett, who eh. <laughs> well, that happened. So yeah. I mean, going to Cleveland, you and you get another top pick. You could sign uh, Jabari Parker. Let's throw him in there because yep. that's, that's who I would take. You, Cleveland looks like a good spot for LeBron. And I mean, that's a place he could win in for a couple of years. That's a team where he doesn't have to say, "Oh, I went back to my Cleveland days." Yep. He's, when he he's said that during the talent. finals, I was like, oh, yeah. oh. That, that's a lot of talent. I mean, granted, they haven't performed up to their fullest. Uh, looking at you, Anthony Bennett. Looking at you, Deion Waiters. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there's there's some talent there. And they still have enough money on the books to go out and get somebody else, too. Mm-hmm. So See, and this my is... money would be on him going to Cleveland if he went anywhere. But... I think likely he'll stay in Miami, and they'll pick up somebody in free agency to tempt him back. Okay, are they going to opt out and stay in Miami? Like opt out, re- uh, re- negotiate renegotiate contracts? Opt in? Because they can do it two ways. I know, I know. But if but if they I feel, opt, I feel if like they opt they out and sign, then they're going to be there Locked for a up while. again. Yeah. I think they're going to opt in and just do the one more year. Okay. And then they'll go from there. Because, see, this is— And this is and LeBron right gets away, to play all over again next year. This is me being wrong. Yep. There was, I want to say, what was it, a week or two ago when the Knicks announced Fisher as their head coach? Mm -hmm. I looked at, in a video, if he's the right fit, and I looked at the Knicks kind of cap situation. Next offseason, this is who they get to take off the books for sure. It was Stoudemire, Mello, Chandler, Bonyarni, J.R. Smith, and Felton. Maybe they have player options, but those top four. It's the entire roster. What I was going to, what my prediction was, Mellow opts in, stays one year. Okay, let's see what Fisher and Phil can do. And then next offseason, hey, LeBron, come over here, play in New York with me. But obviously that didn't happen. Yeah, well, no. It's not going to not happen because Mello opted out. Right, because he's going to sign with the Bulls. So, Which makes me happy. That's what I yeah. really wanted. But, I mean, real. That's I was right. looking realistically at the time. No. I mean, that was, that was your whole thing. I understand that. I just don't think that uh, he'll want to play for Derek Fisher as a coach. I, I think playing for a young coach is rough. Here he went through that with Spolstra, mm-hmm. who had to kind of prove himself. You're talking LeBron already. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So I don't think that— I mean, uh, look at— 
And look at the transformation that Spolster has went through from that first big three. Oh, he, he was where it was like, the I'm just babysitting these guys yeah. to, hey, I'm actually a head coach. They yeah. actually like listen to me when I talk and value my opinion. Yeah, no, uh, he's definitely come a long way. I think that that's the only upside the Clippers have is having Doc. I mean, having one of the best coaches in the league and having one of the smartest players in CP3 there alongside you, huge upside. But I think it's just it doesn't make the right kind of sense for him right now to put himself in the harder division, harder opponents. You stay in the East, you got it easy. You just cruise into the playoffs every year. You know year. what's one team that's got to be sitting there just shit in the bed right now, especially if Melo goes to the Bulls? What's that? The Pacers. Wow. You're yeah. possibly going to lose Lance Stevenson. Yep. This could be the last time in a long time that you go back to the Eastern Conference Finals and you kept I your sure coach. I sure hope so. And you kept your coach that should have been fired. Yeah. Vogel should have been gone. It's hard to fire a I'm coach so- after taking to the Eastern Conference playoffs oh, twice. You in should a row. have lost to the Hawks in the first round. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. I was really rooting for the Hawks. I mean, and the, the thing is with the pay, and I'm obviously throwing the Pacers in here. A little bit of fuel I fe- on the fire. I feel like you have to talk about them at this point, especially if Melo goes to the Bulls, because where do they go? Yeah, a, a big question mark. This is a team that kind of lost themselves. They had all the pieces now, there, now they're, now but they just keep, disappeared. They're keeping a little bit of it. I mean, they lose, obviously, Lance Stevenson. They're going to lose Andrew Bynum. Well, yeah, Bynum was such a huge No, help. I know, but it's a name. And the only other players they lose is Luis Scola and um, Evan Turner as a qualifying offer. Yeah, Evan Turner, I think, was that was probably what took their season down was mm-hmm. Evan Turner. If they had never made that trade— I think the team would have been a little better off. But they are keep, they are keeping Hibbert, West, and Hill. Their yep. top three contracts. And, I mean, you, you always got Paul George there. Yeah, you always have Paul George. He's locked up until 18-19 is his player option. Yeah. So they, they've got some pieces there, but definitely they're not now the, uh, the top dog. And, I mean, looking at... Uh, you know how we talked about the Clippers? Yep. Well, they just had three players opt out. Darren Collison, Glenn Davis, and Danny Granger. No. Opted out. Can't blame them either. I mean, it's a good team. I mean, but... when, I remember when I told you that this week, your first thought was, Danny Granger was on the Clippers? He kind of got <laughs> lost in my mind. I'll be honest, he kind of got a little lost. Um, obviously, he has gone through some injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not quite the uh, Danny Granger of old. But... Still a solid player, in good bench player 40, probably. In 41 games this season, he averaged 20.7 minutes per game, shot about 37% from the field, 33 from three, averaged eight points a game. Yeah, he's definitely not coming back to the uh, 18 points a night kind of guy he used to be. So. Hey, let's put it this way. If, we, if, if he could get, if it was manageable, after the Bulls, let's say the Bulls couldn't get a follow. No, I wouldn't take him. You wouldn't take Granger? No, injury history. I, I, I want nothing to do with people who are injured at this point. After dealing with Derrick Rose back-to-back years. Do you um, see any no. team that takes a shot at Granger? Yeah, I'm sure a couple will. Uh, notably, I don't I don't have a team yeah. for you. but I didn't know if you did or not. Maybe no. the Oklahoma City Thunder? No, I that's don't a think team Because got... that's a team I'm looking at going, are they going to make any noise this offseason? They just keep scratching their head for more answers. I mean, obviously Westbrook being out last season hurt badly, but geez, no, they, they need to do something. I don't have an answer for them. They need something to put push them over the top. Oh, could you, like we said, if the Spurs all opt in, if I'm the Thunder, I'm just going great. Yep. Great. You got you to gotta make something happen. Um, I don't know if the question is maybe you turn away from the uh, the, the, the two-man combo that mm-hmm. is Kevin Durant and Westbrook and see what Westbrook could get you. Because I'm looking down. It seems sacrilegious to even say out loud. <laughs> I'm also looking at the notable free agents that they're saying on ESPN. Here are some. Paul Pierce, free agent for Brooklyn. Truth. He could retire, though. That yep. could be a... Big kind of the Bulls, Kurt Heinrich. Are they going to resign Captain him Kirk. as a backup? I hope so. Luau Dang. Well, that could be a good addition. Dewan Blair, Dirk Nowinski is an unrestricted free agent. Nate Robinson, but he has a player option. You have Chauncey Billups. Chauncey. You have um, Chandler Parsons, who has a team option. They would right. rest- if the team didn't pick him up, which would be stupid, they are. Yeah. He would be an, a restricted free agent. Evan Turner, Lance Stevenson. We already said about the Collison, Davis, Granger. No, there's some guys out there that the Thunder could go after. 
I think it's a little disappointing for them, though, as far as uh, Durant is concerned, that you know they went out and they got a decent amount of young guys who just didn't step up to that next level for them. And some of these players have um, early opt-out. Some of these have player options. But listen to these unrestricted free agents for the Heat. Ray Allen, Chris Anderson, Shane Battier, Mike Beasley, Bosch, Chalmers, Douglas, Haslam, James, Jones, Lewis, Odin, Wade. 14 players. I believe, that, I believe that's their whole team besides Cole and Hamilton, who are up next season. Yes, they could, they could in, in a doomsday scenario, lose everyone. And if they do, then, I mean, you just get to throw money at people. Yeah. No, they get to do that all over again, yeah. But I saw that list of players, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Makes you think. That's a lot of people. And, I mean, for uh, the Thunder, the only people there, obviously they lost Fisher, but they have Thabo. Thabo, Cephalosha, and Karen Butler. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, there, there's way too many options right now. <laughs> oh, it's, we could go on for hours. I just want to see the draft, to be honest just with you. Hours. I want the draft to happen. Well, here's how we'll end it then. Okay. Who's your first overall pick at this point? Because Embiid's would, injured. Yeah, after Joel Embiid having that fracture, stress fracture is in Wig- his foot. Is Wiggins your number one, or are you going Jabari? I would go Jabari. I know a lot of people oh, are going I Wiggins. Jab- I love Jabari. Yeah. Maybe it's hometown, whatever, but... I mean, come on. I think he's got the higher potential, like the top end. Mm-hmm. Wiggins is good, but he didn't show up at the end of his college day, you know? And that's the and good, that's the top of the line that's pressure. That's a good thing for Embiid. Show. That's a good for, good thing for Embiid because we don't know if he didn't show or did because he was injured. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't have that flop potential. That, that clout around his name. The yep. team I will say, though, that I'm looking forward to watching in this draft, the 76ers. They have six picks. Total, the yeah, most. Well, they don't have anybody on their team. The other than, most in yeah. the like common draft era. They have Michael Carter Williams. Yeah, MCW, and then that's it. That, that's it. That's I mean, the roster. We were talking right on now. ESPN today that oh, what if they traded him to get more picks? It's like why? Why would you? Are, are trade we aiming him? to be good in like twenty twenty? Is, is this that? is this NBA two K thirteen fourteen? It is. Put a two K. That's what we're playing. That's what they're doing on the 76ers. They gave up everyone they have except for Michael Carl Williams. <laughs> do they, do, did they did they upload this draft class? Do they know what's coming? I think they did. They, they cheated, maybe. <laughs> yes. Like I do in every draft class. I put in the like where you get Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal, and you just stack up on draft picks in that class. Yeah. Maybe they know something we don't. But that's going to do it for our bonus uh, basketball podcast here for MVP Sports. Tell us what you think down below. What do you think? Mello, where's he going to go? Is Duncan going to opt in? The big three, the draft. Anything. Where's Caleb going? I, we didn't even talk about him. I, he's not going to Chicago now. Likely not. <laughs> Warriors. Warriors. Warriors would I'm be a thinking. smart move. But that's going to do it for MVP Sports podcast. Tell us what you think down below. And as always, have a good day, everybody.